Welcome to the Real News Network. I'm Paul Jay in New York. In Syria, the conflict continues. The rebellion seems to be spreading. And the Assad regime teetering? Well, that's one version of the events. The other version of the events is Syria has put down these kinds of uprisings before, and the Syrian elite is likely to hang together. So which is it? Or maybe it's somewhere in between. Now to help us understand what's going on in Syria, that's Hamid Dabashi. Hamid teaches at Columbia University, and he's the author of the book, Brown Skin, White Masks. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Paul. So what's your take on Syria? Yes, Syria has managed to uh, put down these uh, events in the, in the past, especially Bashar al-Assad's uh, father, Hafez al-Assad, but we didn't have Arab Spring going on. Now Arab Spring is, uh, is happening. And the Syrian uprising was in response to the Ar Arab Spring. After Egypt, the greatest apple that will fall is uh, Syria. It is going to so fundamentally change, it, change the uh, uh, situation because with the fall of Egypt, you had the ally of the United States to fall. With the fall of Syria, or any what by fall I mean any democratic uh, change in Syria, you will have a major uh, adversary of uh, uh, of the United States and Israel to fall. That will change the geopolitics of the uh, the region. Anything, any democratic change that may happen, as we speak, leading intellectuals, journalists of uh, uh, Syria have been allowed to have a meeting in a hotel in downtown Damascus. A miracle. Nobody would have imagined. I mean. I, I, one of my dearest friends recently, a, a Syrian filmmaker, Omar Amir Alai, passed away. I mean, if he were alive to see a day like this, it, it's just uh, unimaginable. Has happened. I mean, it's not totally credible. People are criticizing it. Yes, sir, but, but, but the fact of the matter is that this sea change, this, these se seismic changes that are happening with various degrees of success or, or failure or temporary failure, are coming to the fore and will happen in Syria. Right now, what is on the record is more than a thousand civilians have been killed. You have a mass humanitarian uh, crisis on the border with Turkey. Turkey is uh, very agitated and, and incensed with, with Syria, which means there is an international crisis for uh, Syria generated on its borders. Whatever factor of the Syrian elite coming together, they are facing the most fundamental challenge of their uh, history since uh, the Assads have been in power. There, there seems to be quite a, a debate or difference in, in, in interpretation about just what but the Hillary U.S. Clinton's interest is calling here. Assad a reformer. When the rebellion started really in the, Syria, no, you had no. Hillary Clinton's calling Assad a reformer. He's not really the, almost putting him in the same basket with the way they talk about the Gulf Cooperation Council. Oh yes, it's not democratic, but they're reforming. They kind of put Assad there in that basket early on. Um, is, is, there, is, is U.S. policy itself somewhat confused here totally in the sense confused. that better the Assad you know than exactly. what the hell's coming exactly. next? Exactly, because you see, these democratic uprisings have thrown a monkey wrench at these precisely these arrangements. So far as you have Bashar al-Assad in, in there, you know who you're dealing with. And what did ha exactly, Bashar, when I hear the word muqawama, resistance, that uh, Syria is in the forefront of resistance, what exactly? Golan Heights is still uh, under the uh, Israeli occupation. The, the Palestinians are, uh, in fact, uh, going their own way. The rapprochement between Hamas and uh, 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 Fatah is extremely important in terms of uh, Hamas has given up hope on Islamic Republic or on Hezbollah or on uh, the Syrians coming to its aid and trying to uh, have their own, uh, uh, you know, uh, rapprochement. The thing is, United States, Israel, European Union, all of these, NATO, they have lost the plot because the plot has changed. N suddenly we have a democratic will of the Syrians involved in a factor and it is like all democratic wills open-ended we don't know in which, what direction will go the only thing that he, it has done it has destabilized it has made it impossible for you to have regular sort of chess player with the, all of these uh, uh, arrangements and in what direction it will go they cannot control it the confusion of Secretary Clinton by extension of American foreign policy is because the rock from under their feet is pulled and they're trying to control it, they're trying to micromanage it, but it's very difficult, fortunately. The, in terms of what could happen next in Syria, if, if the Syrian army doesn't split, and I don't think there's any too serious signs that it has, and there's no outside intervention, which is har impossible to imagine, that, I mean, not impossible, but highly unlikely, there's any, going to be some foreign intervention, and I think 
the majority of Syri Syrian people don't want it. Um, how does this how does this shift? Because the the, 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 the dictatorship is willing to use any force necessary. If a year, Paul, think a year back. If six months ago somebody would tell you that Bashar al-Assad is going to lift the emergency uh, condition, allow for some of the leading intellectuals, activists, and oppositional forces to gather in downtown uh, Damascus and negotiate democratic uh, issues, you would have said we're out of your, our mind. But it has happened. So it's not so much about perhaps the fall of the Assad regime as an opening up of a democratic exactly, space in Syria. Exactly. And also, if you go to the models of uh, Tunisia and Egypt, in Egypt, all has fallen is just a figurehead. There are many, as you know, many Mubaraks lurking in the, in the army. But the thing is, because the people, as of yesterday, there was a demonstration in, in Tahrir Square, because people are present. Those mini Mubaraks are not coming out. This is the synergy. So this, in fact, we are reconsidering what exactly it means revolution. It's not a revolution on the model of the French Revolution or American Revolution. It is a revolution in terms, that, in terms of the expansion of the political space and participation. That expansion is a Hannah Arendt conception of revolution. That expansion of the public space is already taking place. People have agency. Journalists, intellectuals, activists are out. They are articulating their, their positions. And in the absence of democratic institutions, political party, freedom of expression, freedom of uh, peaceful assembly, etc., we are for the first time in witness to the formation of democratic institutions for enduring democracy. To me, that is far more important in enduring for future than just a figurehead falling and, and so forth. And, and from the Western press point of view, they always look at it just from the point of view of figurehead leaders, geopolitics, alliances within the imperialist yeah, game. Yeah, because but see, for the people, it's about a democratic course, space. Of course, because in much of this uh, so-called Western press, it's still the Orientalist imagination is. I mean, just one figurehead goes, another figurehead comes. But that now we are, in fact, reinventing, reconvening the idea of democracy from ground up, from the Fox Populi, from the will of the people, is something that the Western press also has to stand up in awe and admiration and, and, and behold. And, and still don't understand. Thanks for joining us. Thanks. And thank you for joining us on the Real News Network. Mm -hmm.